Hello guys, welcome back to the Crypto Mining 101 series. Today we're actually going to be looking at pool mining versus solo mining. So I've made videos on this previously. This is just for the Crypto Mining 101 series, just to give you all the information in one place. We've discussed it a lot on the channel, but this is just for an overall generalized view of it, just so you guys that are new to mining can understand pool mining versus solo mining. So we have our graphic up here. We're going to be going through everything. We're going to be trying to explain and show you guys what the difference is between pool mining and in solo mining. So firstly with pool mining, as you see here on this graphic, this is what pool mining is. So we have GPUs, these are all separate. So imagine there's a line between them and they're mining at different places. So this one could be, you know, 20 miles from this one and 20 miles from this one. So what happens in pool mining is that you have miners from across the globe. They mine into a node, which is owned by a pool, so a mining pool. And these mine into the node, and then the node will connect to the chain or the network right here. And when the network finds a block, let's for example say this one, it will pay out into the respective wallets of these miners. So that's basically how pool mining works. It's collating all the hash rate together to find blocks, just so it makes it easier to find blocks on the network and then shares out between these GPUs or these miners that are connected to the pool. And then on the other side, we actually have solo mining. And solo mining is where you just have one solo GPU slash GPU rig. So let's just say that there's six GPUs on here. And then that mines to a node. So this could be your own node or it could be a pool node. There are two different things. Pools will run a solo node for you. They will also take a fee from that node. So you could have your own one, and we'll get a little bit more into that discussion later, or you can mine to a solo pool node. Then the node connects to the network, finds a block, and if you find a block, it goes into your wallet. So that's the main basis of what solo mining versus pool mining is. Solo mining is obviously mining on your own. Pool mining is mining into a pool of miners, and then the block reward is shared into the wallet. Now when you're mining into a pool, let's say you have 50% of the hash rate, on one of these rigs, 30% on another rig in a different location, and 20% on a different rig in a different location. This amount of hash rate will mine into the block, so it will connect to the node, and then it will actually connect to the pool, and this is the block that we're sharing, so there is a pool fee. Now, pool fees can vary depending on which pool you're using. I will give you an example right now. As you can see on mining pool stats, a place where all the pools are listed for all the coins, you can see here that the pool fee for the top pool on Casper coin is 1%. And then as you go down, it actually goes to 0.75 and then 0.75, 1, 0 0.5. So there's varying different pool fees just to use the pool. Now, these pools also work on a shares system. So most of them will be PPLNS, which is paper last N shares which basically in theory means that they count your shares and then however many shares you submitted into the block that's found on the network, as we can see back here, that's how much of a percentage of the block you get. So for example, this GPU, because it's 50%, will get up to here and it will get all of this space. Then this mining rig might get up to here and it will get all of this part of the block. Then finally, this one will get here, it'll get a smaller slice of the block and then the last few percentage will go to the fee. So that's the breakdown structure of how it would get paid out. So the more hash rate, the more of the block reward you're going to get. However, with the 1% pool fee, that's going to take 1% off your hash rate. It could be 0.75% as we saw earlier. And this is obviously going to reflect in your wallet. So you would actually get 49% of the block reward. The blue one would get 29% and the purple one would get 19%. So paid out into the wallet here, here, and here. Now the share structure that we're talking about, that PPLNS that we see back here, can be different. However, I believe a lot of pools right now have opted just to go for PPLNS. It's the most fair version of counting shares and pretty much it's the gold standard for pools right now. So that's basically how the pool mining works in terms of the structure of your mining into a block. However much percentage hash rate you contribute to that block is how much you're going to get paid minus the pool fee. 
And now on the solo mining side, obviously you would have 100% of the hash rate because you're solo mining. You would mine to the network, you'd find a block, and you would keep 100% of this block. Now you only keep 100% if you run your own node. So back here in the graphic that we saw earlier, you can see that we have a node here. So if this was your own node, then you do keep 100% of the block reward. However, if it's a pool node that offers solo mining, then you won't keep 100% of the block reward. You'll probably keep around 99% of the block reward. I will show you another example here. So as you can see with these coins, you have a solo and a PPLNS version. So if we click on the PPLNS, it'll show miners here. So this is the pool mining that's going on. We're just focusing on this radiant one right now. If you click on solo, it'll show you how many miners are mining to the solo node. So pools will offer this solo node and you can basically mine into it. And for using their services, they're gonna collect a fee again. So 0.9% on viper.net for radiant. This is probably one of the easiest ways to solo mine because you don't actually require the setup for the node. You can just use somebody else's and they take a small percentage of the fee. However, when we go back here, let's turn this on. We can see that if we have 100% and we run our own node, we keep 100% of the block reward. As I said, like we look back, if it was not our own node, we'd probably keep like 99.1% of the block reward and the other percentage would just go to the pool operators who are running a node. So there's various different ways. This has become a slightly newer thing. However, people that are mining to the solo node count as their own solo miner. So even when it says, like we saw on viper.net, it says 45 miners. These miners are each mining solo on that node. So they're not collated together. It's only when you click on the pool side is where these miners are working towards to get actual blocks. If we click on blocks here, you can actually see when it updates, you can see the blocks that are coming on the network. So these are all the pool blocks. This is just a Nexa pool. You can see that all of these have been hit on a pool. And then if we scroll back up, you can see the solo blocks which have been hit by various solo miners. So, so a lot less volume in terms of solo mining. If we compare this chart, you can see that there's a bunch of blocks here. However, when we click on the pool version, there's way more blocks in terms of volume. So that's the difference between solo and pool mining in terms of how it works. So pool mining is just a collection of hash rate. Solo mining is doing it on your own to your own node, and then you get paid the full block reward. However, if you want to use a pool solo node, they will take a fee just for using that. So one of the downsides slash upsides of solo mining is the luck on the network. It's a weird concept to get around because it works on a scale of 0% to 100% and then 100% up to infinity percentage. I've just put 200 plus here because it's easier to explain. So this is basically how lucky you are on a network. I will show you an example of this now. On this Viper pool that we were just previously on, it shows effort here. So effort and luck are the same type of thing. All the ones in green are basically very lucky. So from 0% to 100% is typically lucky then from 100% onwards is not lucky. This is why you have the ones in green being under 100% and then the ones in gray being over 100%. This is displayed a little bit better on the hero miners page because you can see the ones which are in the green. So 107%, if we click back to our scale, it's still considered lucky because it depends on the hash rate difficulty and latency. However, when you get to about this range here, that's when it starts to become unlucky going forward. When we come back here, so 8.7% luck on the network or 2.1% luck on the network, as we're seeing here, is very lucky. And then anything over 100%, so this is extremely unlucky. Now, when they're talking about effort slash luck, it's the effort put into the block. So if you put 100% effort into the block and you get a block reward, that basically means the hash rate that you're contributing is equal to one block. However, if it said 543%, that means that the hash rate you're contributing to mine one block is 5.4 times the actual hash rate needed. So this one was running for 5.4 times longer than needed to actually hit a block. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this worker actually hits a block 
within a lower percentage on the next time around, because 543% is a lot to mine without getting a block, but it all depends on the luck on the network. So, what can you do to actually determine the luck on the network? Well, hash rate and difficulty on the network changes all the time. So, if you're on the network and you see that you're lucky with 107% luck, that probably is down to hash rate and difficulty. Because they're moving up and down on the network, it might actually be more than 100%, but you're still considered lucky on the network. It's a weird concept to get your head around, but, but as long as you know that from 0% to 100%, you're considered lucky and then from around 115% onwards that's considered unlucky. So what can we actually do to improve this? Well the only thing that we could do to improve the luck on the network is actually the reliability of your miner. So latency to the node and to the network is going to be one of the main drivers to actually improve the luck. It's not going to be a substantial amount however it is a small edge that you can benefit from in this case. So latency to the node and then latency to the node to the network. For example, if you're solo mining and you run your own node, that means the latency to the node from the miner is going to be basically zero milliseconds, or it could be one or two, depending on the network you're working with. However, when you're mining to a pool, the latency is going to be a little bit higher. I'll show you an example of this now. ViperNet lists all their latencies in order of what it's connecting to your machine that you're actually viewing the web page on. So for me, the node in France is getting the lowest latency at 14 milliseconds. Normally, when you're mining to your own node, it will be zero milliseconds. So it's kind of beneficial to mine to your own node if you have enough hash rate. However, if you're using a pool, you want to find a pool that's closest to you. Now, in terms of solo mining, the network's going to be favorable because you're more reliable to the network. You're quicker, you're faster, you're submitting shares faster. So the latency matters in this case in terms of the solo mining. It does matter as well with pool mining, but not necessarily as much. Solo mining is one of those things that is just, in theory, luck. But over time, if you let it run for a long enough time scale, your luck should be 100%. So you should be getting the same amount of blocks as the hash rate that you're putting in. So it's an odd concept, luck, in terms of solo mining. I hope you can understand how that works now that I've explained it like that. So when it comes to negatives and benefits of pool mining, so pool mining here and solo mining here. With the pool mining side, there's less hash rate needed. So obviously, if you have a small rig of, let's say, four GPUs and you're mining on a very big algorithm slash network, then the hash rate needed to actually solo mine is way higher. So for example, on Bitcoin, basically nobody's solo mining unless you know, you've know you got really big farms. So in terms of solo mining for Bitcoin, it wouldn't necessarily be viable to do that anymore. So you'd have to go into pool mining. Now there are obviously like lottery miners which will mine at a very low hash rate in hopes of hitting a block potentially in the future. However, the other benefits are the regular payouts. So pools, can basically guarantee regular payouts if it's hit in blocks enough. Now, what I mean by that is when we're looking at mining pool stats, we can go back here. You can see on the side that the last block found was in 16 minutes, 29 minutes, 19 minutes, 29 minutes. And this is all dependent on how much hash rate there is on the pool. So there's 82.8% of the hash rate. So the network's going to favor this pool and it's going to give it more blocks over time because it has more hash rate on the network. And this leads to these 51% attacks. So if a person takes over this pool, they can direct hash rate to wherever they want. Those are the type of things that can happen within attacks on a network. As you can see, out of the last 100 blocks, nine of them were found on hero miners and only three were found on Ruli Pooli. So the more hash rate on the pool, the more blocks you're going to get. And that basically means the more regular payments you're going to get. Because the pool is basically hitting blocks all the time, you're putting a little bit of hash rate onto that, and then you're going to get paid out for whatever effort you put into that block. So that's where we can get regular payouts. Now, it does also matter on the pool. Some of them will have high minimum payouts. So with certain coins like Zephyr, I believe, has high payouts for pools. There are pools that offer low payouts, but you just have to look around on mining pool stats for that. And then another benefit is the node setup. So you don't have to set up a node. 
you can just mine into a pool. They'll take a fee. It doesn't necessarily matter about the fee as it says here in our negatives. It can be annoying, but I think the pool fees are kind of justified because they are running the whole network nodes for you. And they're supplying basically a service to you that you can mine to their node and they'll pay out into your wallet. You just have to trust that the pool is going to pay you the right amount. So as I said, pool fee, that's one of the negatives of pool mining. It's also more centralized. So when we talked about that 51% attack, we can go back to Alethium here. We can see that 82% of the hash rate is centralized into the hero miners pool. Now this is just an example. A lot of coins, let's just click on Ergo here. You can see that 45% is on DX pool. Let's see on Casper how much is on. So 33.9% on F2 pool. Normally, if you want to uphold the network, you need to have spread hash rate across the pools. So I know that you're not going to get, in theory, as much payout. However, try to spread the hash rate. If you see a pool that's on 80, 90%, then maybe it's best just to take it down to the next best pool, because that will probably be getting blocks as well on the network. Even no hero miners was getting nine blocks. The Wooly Pooly pool was actually getting three blocks, but you'd get more of a percentage of those blocks. So try to spread the hash rate and keep it more decentralized and less attacks on the network. Then obviously the big one is that you don't keep 100% of the block reward. You do have to pay the pool a fee and the only way you can get around that basically is to solo mine or have a lot of hash rate. And then we come to the benefits. These are basically the opposite of what these are. So you get full block reward for solo mining. It's way more decentralized depending on if you're using your own node or not. There's no fees unless you're mining to a pool node, then there is a small fee. So that should actually be in red. The downsides are that you need more hash rate and there's less payouts and luck on the pool. So you have to factor in luck. It should be 100% if you run it for, you know, a long period of time. It should average out to 100% luck. And then obviously the node setup, unless you're using a pool. So you have to factor in all of these if you want to solo mine. Normally, a lot of us are going to stick to pool mining if we don't have enough hash rate. If you are going to solo mine, people tend not to set up nodes. They just use a pool solo node. And lastly here, if you do want to solo mine, so you've gone through and you said, oh, I want to solo mine instead of pool mine. Here are all the figures that you need for solo mining. So these are based off a solo mining rate at the time of recording for one block every seven days. If you have this hash rate, you're probably on average going to hit one block every seven days or one block a week. So let's just start at the top. Casper, 300 giga hash. Dogecoin, 90 giga hash. Ethereum Classic, 4 giga hash. Litecoin, 200 giga hash. Zephyr, 300 killer hash. Alephium is around 2 giga hash. Claw AI, 350 mega hash. Ravencoin, 500 mega hash. Dynex, 150 killer hash, Radiant is 35 giga hash, Flux is 500 souls, Neoxa is 60 mega hash, Octospace is 80 mega hash, Hypera is 10 mega hash, Torium is 6000 hashes, Nexa is 1500 mega hash, Nur AI is 300 mega hash, and Ergo is 2400 mega hash. So these are all the ones that I've listed. I haven't listed Bitcoin because I don't think it's viable for any of you watching to actually start solo mining Bitcoin. But this will give you an average over time of one block every week. So I believe that the lowest on here has the lowest hash rate and hardware that you would need for that. And I think at the top would probably be Dogecoin or Litecoin. You'd have to put a lot of money into these to actually solo mine. And then it's probably gonna be Casper, Ethereum Classic, Zephyr, maybe, but not too sure. Claw AI, that's a lot of hash rate. Ravencoin, substantially more than Claw AI, actually, in terms of the hash rate. And I just want to note that these hash rates are relative. So for Casper, it's 300 giga hash, but it could also be 0.3 tera hash. I'm just doing it in the most base figure I could find out. So for example, Alephium is 2 giga hash, which means that you'd need, I don't know, like a 4090 and that would get one block a week. So that is pool mining versus solo mining, a very basic overview for you. If you wanna know anything more, please leave a comment down below or join the Discord. I'll try looking there and I'll try answer your questions. 
If this video helped you out, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this.